In Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by Dino Dynamics, your leaders in premium performance. And with thanks to the All Seasons Phillip Island Resort. Delegates from Australia and several overseas countries came together in Melbourne last week for the Cars of Tomorrow conference. The conference was part of the Australian Automotive Week and looked at the challenges ahead for the auto industry in light of changing environmental and economic conditions. Keynote speaker at the conference was Professor Neville Jackson, Chief Technology and Innovation Officer from the UK-based Ricardo Group. Uh, Ricardo is uh, an engineering consultancy that provides research design and development for the world's automotive industry, primarily focused on powertrain, transmissions, engines, electric drives and so on. You showed in your, uh, your presentation a number of, of, of cars that you've been involved in. The one that would interest our viewers far and away the most is the McLaren. Tell us what, you, what Ricardo did with McLaren. Uh, we were responsible for the design and development of that engine uh, pretty much from a clean sheet of paper and we went from that to production in 18 months, which is quite extraordinary. Uh, we make about 50 of those engines a week in our Shoreham facility. Uh, that we warrant as well and we're responsible for homologation and also for calibration of those vehicles in uh, the US European markets. We're at a Cars of Tomorrow conference. What do you think is the future of high performance motoring? There's been a lot of talk today about environmentalism and, and clean and green cars and sensible cars. We're not interested in sensible cars. We're interested in really stupid cars that go very, very fast and the people are passionate about. How important is passion in designing these cars of the future? Oh, absolutely vital. Passion enthusiasm is the main driver in innovation and coming up with new technologies to solve those problems. And I don't think we're going to see the death of high performance, interesting vehicles for many, many years, if at all. All that's likely to happen is they could get a little bit more expensive as we have to add a lot of technology to make them more fuel efficient. Well, that's no problem. We've got lots and lots of money. Motor racing is full of money, although Bernie's got most of it. Now, uh, to, to also tell us about uh, some of the technologies that you were talking about. I mean, where is the breakthrough is going to come? Everybody's talking about electric vehicles as if we can suddenly start pumping out sort of, you know, battery powered cars in, you know, the next couple of years and we'll all be driving them to work and they'll be wonderful but realistically in the next say 10 years how much is the car going to change? Superficially you probably won't see a lot of big changes uh, under the hood and then within the powertrain you will see an increasing amount of what I call electrification so the electrical system will become more capable and recover energy as you slow down and reuse it uh, but not in the sense of a full hybrid and the cost that that brings. So things will stay pretty much as you would have them today, but we'll get far more fuel efficient. Uh, our main challenge, I think, in uh, the automotive industry is getting more and more electrical people, people with electronic and electrical systems engineering, big demand at the moment, and that's likely to be a worldwide challenge. Well, we're seeing this in motorsport, of course, in Formula One with Kurz, and also at Le Mans we've seen the, uh, the, the Audi that we had on our program last week uh, that will race at Le Mans. Also just uh, unveiled today on the track for the first time the Delta Wing project, which is a very small engine and concentrates on things like lightweight and aerodynamic drag. Where do those sorts of technologies come in, and what can motorsport add to the development of these future cars? It's, it's an interesting question. I think... Uh, motorsport has a lot to bring as long as we can converge the agendas. What the FIA have done with introducing fuel efficiency as a key challenge within motorsport I think has been really important because lots of innovations come out from motorsport but we need to make them more relevant to what the road cars need and I think the FIA has taken the lead in making that happen. Uh, Curse has been a good example. I showed some examples of flywheel technology that could make it into the commercial market. Um, some of the innovations in materials, in aerodynamics and so on, and some of the processes that are used. Uh, low friction coatings, for instance, in previous Formula 1 engines have been very important for us. So uh, motorsport, very important in driving that agenda. My name is Anne Evans. I'm a partner, I'm a director, and I'm also the head of uh, administration of the company. I think the best thing about my job is I get a lot of responsibility to do things the way I think they should be done. Uh, every day I get to fabricate something different and interesting. Best thing about my job is helping customers. Customer service is the key to keeping our customers here satisfied. Customer service is important to Dyno Dynamics to keep people coming back to us. Describe Dyno Dynamics in one word, great.